Good. Whereabouts are you? I think uh, I've asked you before. I'm down in Exeter. You're in Exeter? Yeah, oh. just outside of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I know Exeter quite well. My son used to live down that way. All right. Um, for more in, in the country. I'm trying to think of the name of the town he lived in now. <laughs> yeah, but we used to come down there quite a bit. Hmm. It's a nice uh, part of the world. Uh, where, where are you um, based currently? Uh, I'm in Hampshire. Oh, yeah. Near, near Farnham in Surrey. Farnham's in Surrey, and hmm. I'm in a place called Borden. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Have you been there for a long time, or sort no, of... no, we we just got out of London uh, when the uh, lockdown started. In uh, so we moved here on the first of April. We just got out. Before oh wow! Well, yeah. 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 Well, I had lived in London for quite a long time, and and um, you know we were thinking of moving anywhere. And when all this you know pandemic started, we thought we'd better get out quick. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, incidentally, do you want me to call you Christian or, or Chris? Do you have a preference? Yeah, either Christian or Chris, uh, you know, whatever's easiest for you. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll keep it. I'll keep it to Chris. Might just keep it a bit more simple. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah. So, are we waiting for other people to join or uh, what? Yeah, we've got most, I think we've got about, um, pretty much everybody, but we've just got a couple of people still to join us. So, okay. checking the list at the moment. Um, well, I'm in your hands. Okay, lovely. Um, yeah, so I reckon if we give it um, two or three minutes, then we can uh, okay. start. We're following this extraordinary family throughout another year as they work around the clock on their life department. Yeah, it's waiting for two more at the moment, so I'll just check my email, see if anyone's having any technical issues. Okay, Philip. Um, so do you do quite a lot of this? Uh, yeah, I've done quite, quite a few. It, it, um, I, I, I didn't intend to do a huge number of, of, of these. I just thought it would be fun to, to do one and two, one or two. And yeah. I, I think tonight's number 16. So it's... it's oh, right. Quite, quite and the, uh, and what, what are you mainly interested in, um, apart from the Persuaders? Um, well, well, I've always been a, a big James Bond fan. Oh, um, right. So I've done a couple of, uh, of Bond events. Um, right. I, I'm a big fan of the, the Avengers, the new Avengers. Um, right. Lots of cult TV shows. I, I suppose you could say I'm interested in, in everything, really, to, to, to some extent. Yeah. I, I'd imagine probably James Bond and the Persuaders are... Yeah, up there. Everything. Yeah, definitely. That's Roger something. Moore. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think Roger Moore is my favourite Bond. Um, yeah. Um, I know a lot of Bond fans would, would mightly say Sean Connery, but for me it's interesting. Well, I, I know a few of them because uh, I worked with Roger Moore and I um, I did a, a very early show with um, Pierce Brosnan when, oh, he, when he was just starting as an actor. Oh, uh, in wow. fact, he, he, he was uh, the assistant stage manager in a play I did and he had one line. <laughs> Um, and I was at Rada with Timothy Dalton. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew him. But uh, I never did a Bond film. I don't suppose you never know, thought back then that they would go on to, to, to you know, have such, you know, such, such stardom and um, with, with Bond and everything. Yeah. No, quite. Well, I didn't know they would be, uh, you know, I didn't know Pierce Brosnan would go on to do what he yeah. did. And, and Timothy Dalton was at RADA with me, so... Because he always strikes me as a, as a quite a very serious, sort of, you know, classically trained actor, of course, and and the one thing I find strange, he never really does much, much stage work, which is which I think is a pity. Yeah. Well, so, some people do. So I, I've, I've done quite a lot of stage work, but when, when um, films and television dried up a bit for me, I did a lot of rep, you know, mm. repertory theatre. Yeah. 
which I enjoyed very much. Well, I just had a question come in from, from Ian. Uh, he was wondering, um, would you have been at RADA with David Warbeck as well? No. No, I, don't, I wasn't there. I was there with uh, Ken Cranham. Um, who else was very... Uh, Stephanie Beecham. Um, Ken Cranham was going out with Helen Mirren at the time, so I ran into her quite a lot. Sounds like quite a fascinating time to um, to be at definitely. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it was. So some people just send you in questions, do they? Uh, yeah, so what we've got is I've got a few questions that came in via email prior to tonight. Uh -huh. There's a, a chat function so people can ask questions throughout the, the evening as well. So I'll yeah. leave them out at, at, at appropriate points or I might lead them to, to the end, depending on... Um, you may have told me already, but how, how long do you think uh, this will go on for? Uh, well, we'll, we'll press play in a couple of minutes' time. So the episode's 51 minutes, I think it is. Right. Um, so maybe sort of a, a 10 or 15 minutes afterwards. Oh, I see. We need to go just... just but are we going to watch it? Are we going to watch it at the same time? Watch it at the same time, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. So hey. if, if at any point you, you know... Um, so yeah, it should be just a, a quick sort of summary at, at, at the end. But if obviously if you need to go at it, to go, and I'm still waffling at you, just to just uh -huh. hand up and say, just get carried okay. away. Um, okay, we'll play it by ear. Is there something playing in the background, Chris? Um, uh, the television's on in my. Is it bothering you? Can I, my wife's watching the television in the nearby. Shall I just turn it down a bit? Oh, um, I don't want to disturb her. I can hear you just fine. So um, okay. we can get on. I just. Um, I can turn it down a little bit if you like. Uh, if, if she doesn't mind. Yeah. But, um, okay. yeah, Chris. okay, so if everyone watching uh, uh, along, I just want to get your um, uh, copy of, of Take Seven to Hand. I'm just going to pause on the first frame of the, the episode. So uh, Chris visiting the, uh, the, the graveyard and then I'll just do a brief introduction when Chris gets back and then we'll press play on the episode. Is that better? Oh yeah, that, that's perfect. Thank, thank you, Chris. It's much appreciated. Yeah. Um, so I've just asked everybody to get their episode uh, up in front of them. Um, so right. just give them a few seconds to do that, then I'll introduce you and then we'll then we'll get cracking. Okay. I had a lot more hair in those days. I, I, I was looking at it today and I thought I need a haircut because I'm getting I'm almost looking like you were back 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 then. So yeah. um must must get that done. Okay, so I think we're all ready to, to start. So, um, so I just want to say to everybody, welcome and thank you for joining us for this uh, Watch Along with the Swayers episode, uh, Take 7. I'm delighted to be joined by Christian Roberts, the, uh, one of the guest stars in this particular episode. Uh, for those that might not know, Christian's credits include To Sew With Love, um, uh, uh, Twisted Nerve, uh, episodes of UFO, Black 7. Um, is there anything you'd like to add to that, Christian, in terms of your credits? Uh, I, I, the other famous one was t the anniversary with Betty Davis. Oh yes, and I think I've got a question that's come in about about that one. Um, and also, oh, I, I, I've got to mention the mind of Mr. Soames as well. The mind of Mr. Soames, Terence Stamp. Yeah. And so, um, so that's your your credits. Um, and obviously, we'll probably touch on a few of them as as we go along. Uh, okay. so you've got the um, uh, remotes to hand. So we're just going to press play. So hopefully we're paused on the um, the first shot of Chris visiting the, the graveyard. So I'll do a countdown from five, and then we'll all press play together. Okay. So five, four, three, two, one, play. Okay. We'll turn the sound down. So the first question I wanted to ask you, Chris, was how did this, um, how, how was this part offered to you? How did the persuaders come about into your life? Well, uh, it was uh, through my agent, really. 
But I suppose uh, I'd done a few films at that time and um, uh, I was just offered the part. Hmm. Uh, I can't remember specifically why or when, hmm. but um, no, I was quite happy to. Uh, I, I was, I'd already seen The Persuaders, so I enjoyed it. So, so by that point you had seen... A... Now that building there that I go into, that is actually Pinewood Studios. It is indeed, yes. Yeah, yes. that's the outside um, of Pine, Pinewood Studios. It, it crops up an awful lot in, in The Persuaders and the Caledon yeah. films and countless other... Um... That, that, that's where we filmed it, that's where we filmed the, uh, that exterior. I don't know, this was obviously a set, the, the, mm. the house itself. Um, and that was my own black, black suede jacket. I remember buying that. Oh, right. I don't think I've got it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be worth a lot, I think. You, I, mean, I mean, do you ever keep any, any props or anything like that? Or Funny you... enough, I kept the leather jacket that I wore in To So Would Love. Oh. And, and quite recently, I just sold it on, um, I, I, on a, at an auction. Hmm. I thought it might get something, but it got quite a, it got, it got about 800 quid or something. Oh, I would have thought it would go much more than that, but... Yeah, I, um, was hope, I was hoping it might have done. I, I think the film, the, the film props and the market tend to sort of go up and down a little bit, so I suppose it, yeah. it depends on, on timing and things, but... Um, yeah. um, so, so you would have had input in your, in your, in your costume, obviously, if you were allowed to bring your own... Yeah. Um, so that's a Sinead. Mm -hmm. I had just I had just worked with her father uh, oh. in a, a BBC series called Closh Merle hmm. uh, and um, Cyril Cusack was in that and uh, so it was quite nice to work with his daughter just a, a little bit later. And um, what was she uh, she liked to work with? She was very nice so, and, it, and also it was quite early in her career. Hmm. Uh, the Persuaders. I mean, she's gone on to do a hell of a lot since then. Oh, she has indeed, yes. Uh, but she was uh, very good. We got on very well. I'm your brother. Even I'm though I slapped her. <laughs> yeah, again, I think that that's one of the things that, that perhaps takes the Persuaders, you know, some of these things you can get away with these days, I, I guess. Uh, slapping a woman, yeah. Mm. Well, as we were saying um, the other day, uh, it must have been interesting for Tony Curtis and Roger Moore because Tony Curtis was very much a, a film star. Yes. Then, I mean, I know Roger Moore had done films, but it, he hadn't really made his name like he did afterwards as James Bond. Mm. But Tony Curtis was a big, I mean, you know, Some Like It Hot and all those sort of films. He was a big star. I mean, did you get the sense that Tony was comfortable doing doing TV? Because, obviously, as you say, their careers were kind of going in opposite directions. I think I think uh, Tony Curtis was was comfortable doing anything that would keep him in in the limelight. Mm. I, I believe reading, uh, you know, towards the end of his career, he wasn't getting much work, and he really did everything to get the part in Boston Strangler because he thought yeah. that would really sort of kick his career off again. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, so obviously you were saying that you have, um, a lot of the episodes is obviously exteriors at, at Pinewood Studios and obviously this was, was filmed at, at Pinewood. What are your memories of, of, of Pinewood as, uh, as a studio and, and do you like working at, at Pinewood? Yeah, no, it, it, it's a great studio. I worked to So With Love was made there as well, so I was quite familiar with it. Um, and the persuaders, uh, obviously, uh, it's a, it's a lovely place, and you know that building that is in the exterior. There's this sort of uh, like club room and restaurant where where you eat, you have your meals, and hmm. uh, all the rest of that. You know, it's, it's a beautiful place. The entrance is good too. It's sort of like an old archway of, of, of timbered buildings. Yeah, yeah, you know that too. But uh, frankly, uh, um, through a couple of James Bond events, um, I've been to Pinewood and You've been there, yeah. the house and, 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 and obviously the grounds and things. It's a, a very nice... Um, yeah, no, it's a beautiful part of the world. Hmm. 
So, so would would you prefer working in the primary, say, versus a place like L Street? Would they, do you have? Was yeah, you I did the the anniversary was at L Street. Not such. Uh, I mean, it was more more like a working studio. The time was like going to a country house. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I prefer Pinewood to any, anywhere, I think. So it had like a more informal feel to it, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah, Shepparton was quite nice, too, Shepparton Studio. Hmm. Um, but, um, so there is, that's Lawrence Naismith, isn't it? The, Lawrence the Naismith, yeah. yeah. And would you have encountered him at, at any point? Um, well, I never, I, I didn't have a, any scenes with him. No. But what's interesting is that I found out later that he he went to the same school that I went to. Oh, right. I went to Cranley School. Hmm. Obviously not the same time as him. <laughs> but uh, that's that's as much as I know about him, really. I didn't I didn't meet him on the on the show. But I've seen him in a lot of he's did a lot of television and films. He's one of those actors that, that crops up quite quite a lot, isn't yeah. he? Like he did yeah. um, Dunn's A Forever with Sean Connery, the Bond film, he had a little role in, in that one. He's great, Tony Curtis, in this, isn't he? Because he's always playing around. I mean, would you find that Tony would always do something different each each take? Was he always there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Off the top of his head, really. You know, just try everything out. Hmm. <laughs> and, and as an actor, do you like working with people that, that, that change it, mix it up? Well, I do really, yes, it's kind of relaxing. You, know, It depends, actually, it depends what the scene is that you're doing. I mean, if it's a very serious scene where you've got to concentrate on it. Yeah. But then, um, you know, so, something like this, um, and for him, you know, he, he's just very relaxed. Mm. Yeah. No, I like to, I like working with him very much. He, 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 you know, I mean, uh, he was very helpful to 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 the young actors. He, you know, you could sort of chat to him about anything, and he'd give you little bits of advice. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And how would say say Roger be to to work with him? In yeah, how... well, Roger was very good too. I mean, he's he's such a professional, and you know, like all of them, like um, Betty Davis. You know, although she was. She was a tough woman, Betty, and she gave the director a hard time. But for, for other actors, she knows she's got to appear on screen with the other actors. So, hmm. so she gives as much as you know she takes. Oh, yeah. And, and um, Roger Moore and Tony Curtis were the same. You know, yeah. you were you were partners in partners in whatever you're doing. Hmm. Yeah. And you find they were always, they, they got on very well together and... They seem to, yeah. I don't know whether they socialised or anything, but um, they seem um, to get on very well together. Yeah, I did hear that they didn't sort of have the same, the same circle, so it was very much a professional relationship that they had. Um, and obviously it's one that worked um, incredibly well. Well, presumably, I mean, Tony Curtis didn't, wasn't living in England, so he must have been in some kind of you know, accommodation or a hotel, or, whereas Roger Moore obviously had his home here. I, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know anything about their relationship, you know, outside, um, outside the studio. Yeah, I've got a sense that they were obviously quite different people and that they, obviously their chemistry on screen is fantastic, but they were quite different people and they didn't, miss, and I think sometimes it may have been a bit fractious on, on occasion, but I don't think there was any, there was certainly not any bad blood or anything. No, no bad blood, no. Yeah. So it sounds like a very happy set to um, and show to work. Yeah, yeah, it was. Now, do you know, I've forgotten the name of the director. But he was, oh, it's um, Sid Sidney Hares? Sidney Hares, yes. Mm. He, he was quite a good, quite a good experienced television director. Mm. And um, yeah, I found him very helpful too. Yeah, he had, he had done some Avengers episodes and uh, things like that, so he's very used to sort of um, doing um, projects like, like this. Mm, um, yeah, they did quite a bit. Mm. You do a lot of research on IMDb. 
Uh, it is quite important, yeah. So mm. it, you would wonder what people would, did before IMDb. That's right. I always check that out and what directors have done what. And, you know. yeah, yeah, I use it quite a lot. And of course, sometimes it's not accurate, but it's... It's pretty nice. accurate. And, and, and if you find something that's not accurate, you can you can add things or you can add photographs and things like that. I do that quite a bit. So, so you update your page and if you have found yeah. anything that wasn't... Well, that correct. You, you, cook, you can correct it. Yeah. And they send you a nice email thanking you. <laughs> I shall um, give that a go because I know a few people who I've talked talk to that says, oh, well, my, this credit or that credit's not on there, so I might see if I can uh, put it on for them. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Now I must keep watching the show. Hmm. One little thing I remember about um, about Tony Curtis was, and I think you see it in one of the scenes, I'm wearing my own watch. And mm -hmm. I've forgotten what it was. It, it wasn't anything terribly expensive, but it had a sort of blue face. Yeah. Tony Curtis really wanted it. He said, God, I really like your watch. Where'd you get that? You know, do you want to sell it? And <laughs> silly little things like that. Did you sell it to him or? Uh... No, I think, I think I'll still run it somewhere. <laughs> um, but I remember that and I, when I re-watched this, hmm. I think in one scene you can actually see it on my wrist. Oh, I'll look out for that. Yeah. So, so I, in terms yeah. of designing your, um, of your costume, you obviously had uh, quite an influence in terms of what you wore and... Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think the suit they asked me to go and buy it, and I bought it, and I think I kept it afterwards. Hmm. Would, would you usually find on TV shows like that? Would they'd obviously pay for it? I take it you didn't buy yeah, it. Yeah, they they would pay for it, and they just get something that go, you go and get something that suits you. Hmm. Uh, Into Sir with Love, I don't know if you remember. Right at the end, when we have have the dance and everything, and I introduce Lulu to sell, sing her song. I'm wearing a yellow suit. Oh yes, I do remember, I vaguely remember that. Yes. Yeah. And um, I remember going to buy that in Carnaby Street mm. with Lulu and Judy Jeeson. They both chose it for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't keep that one though. I don't think I was ever going to wear a yellow suit again. <laughs> um, so do you find on, on main productions that you were allowed to go out and, and buy your own, own stuff? Or yeah, you know, on some of them, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, most of the time. Uh, I see today that Lulu has been honoured in the birthday honours by the Queen. Oh, uh, yes. Um, CB, CBE, I think. Yes, at that time, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, I suppose she couldn't get a Dame Hood. You can't call her Dame Dame Lulu. <laughs> yeah, and not have a wing to it, does it really? Um, her real name's Marie MacDonald McLaughlin Laurie or something. Hmm. Uh, we've had a question come in for, from, uh, from Ian. Uh, can you remember where you bought the suit in the Persuaders or was it...? Um... Yeah, it was in the King's Road somewhere, I think. What was it called in those days? Lord John or something like that. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, is it? Uh, are we going to see anybody else? I know, just, just you, you and I. Um, everyone else is. The, but is people it, can see you, can they? Or? Oh yeah, they can see both both of us. So either they can see, they can they have a choice. So either they see it like we are now, fifty fifty, or they can see the person speaking on. on yeah, board. well, I'm I'm open to questions. Everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep keep them coming, please. Um, so um, so I wanted to ask was it, so. Would it have been about a week's sort of work on, on this episode or two? Oh, Persuaders? Oh, no, it was more than that. It was it was probably about three weeks, three or four oh, weeks, yeah. yeah. So was that usual for, for TV shows that you were doing at that sort of time? Or yeah, just... well, you know, I mean, they're, they're hour-long shows, so, that, you know, like a movie yeah. would take... Um, seven or eight weeks in those days so so an hour-long tv show probably took at least four weeks about four yeah and did you, because obviously this is on um on film but did you do any tv that was done on, on videotape live tv uh, yeah, live TV, yeah 
Yeah, well, very early on, I did some BBC stuff, you know, the mm. Epic 66, was, which was all about the Battle of Hastings. Mm. <laughs> Uh, you know, other, other ones, I think Secret Army was filmed, wasn't it? That was BBC as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he got with that with, with Sue Lloyd. Do you remember uh, Sue at all? Uh, well, I remember, yeah. Not, I can't remember much about her very much. It, um, she did a lot of work, didn't she? Oh, very much so, yeah. From... Oh, he was saying uh, Blake Seven. Oh, Blake Seven. I don't remember much about that, except that I knew Gareth um, Thomas quite well because he was at RADA around the some, same time as me. Oh, lovely. Uh, yeah, I didn't have a big part in that. But the, Julian Glover was in that. He's a, he was a very nice man, very good actor. Oh, yes, he is indeed. Yeah. Um, so, so in terms of getting jobs, was it ever the actor you knew or the writer, or was it always really uh, the agent? It was mostly agents, I think, you know. Mm. After To Sir With Love, I got a contract with Columbia, mm. and um, I was let out to do film. The film I enjoyed making the most was um, The Desperados. Okay. Now, it, it's not a terribly well-known film, but, you know, I'd always wanted to be a cowboy. Mm. <laughs> and to play Jack Palance's son was an absolute thrill. Yeah. You know, but we didn't film it in America. We filmed it in Spain. Oh, so yeah. it was a, mm. a paella western rather than a spaghetti western. Mm. Um, just outside Madrid. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, Jack Palance. Um, what was his name? Vince Edwards, who was Dr. Ben Casey, yeah. television, and George Maharis, who mm -hmm. was in Route 66 on television, and a guy called Neville Brand. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Neville Brand was, I think, after Audie Murphy, he was the second most decorated American hero of the Second World War. Oh, wow. He then became an actor. Hmm. But um, he was he was drunk most of the time we were filming. <laughs> Remember um, we used, we used to uh, he'd meet we'd go and pick him up from the Hilton Hotel in the morning in the same car to drive out to the set, hmm. and he'd get through half a bottle of vodka before we got to the set. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> did, did it affect his performance, or was he one of those acts that? Uh, he, he was he was all right, but a couple of times he did have to. They did have to stop filming and giving a, give him a, a vitamin B shot. <laughs> I shouldn't be telling you all this, but, but he was no, he was a very nice man. I got on with him fine, but hmm. he just had an alcohol. I, I read later that he he did have an alcohol problem, and he then became he, he then gave it up and um, hmm. he, he became um, clean. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and what was it like working with Jack, Jack Palance? Oh, he was great. He, but funny enough, he, he was a real anglophile. He used mm. to dress in tweed, tweed coats and he'd smoke a pipe. And he, oh. he loved everything English. Yeah. Um, quite unlike the character that you th thought he might be. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, he, he was a good, good man. Mm -hmm. I got the sense that, uh, that Robert Vaughan was, was very similar in that respect, that he loved uh, in, English culture and... and he, yes, he did. He yes, he did. Here. So, do you remember Robert Vaughan um, uh, at all? Yes, yes, he, he, was, he was interesting to know. He, he, was, uh, um, he wanted to be a politician, really. I think he did stand for some kind of office in, in America. Yeah. He, was, he was quite serious, you know, and he was always reading the papers. And But again, I was thrilled to work with him because one of my favourite films ever is um, Magnificent Seven. Oh, yes. Which he was in. Yeah. He had one of my best lines in, uh, in The Magnificent Seven when he, he plays this gunman, you know, and there's a, a thing where he goes to grab these flies on the table and he grabs his hand out and then he opens his hand 
and he's only got two in his hand. He says, there was a time I would have caught all three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so fast anymore, you know. Yeah, so, I just joke with him about that. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had the, the pleasure of seeing him uh, on stage when he did 12 Angry Men. Um, oh, yeah. 2014 or 13. I don't know, is he, is he still alive? Sadly not. I think he died in 2016, I, I believe. Um, and I, it's, the only, it's the only play I've ever gone to see him twice. And, and, it, I, and that was because I wanted to see, see Robert um, perform again. So, um, I, we're not really referring to this film very much, and I've oh. just let, noticed on my yeah. phone that my battery's going on the phone. Uh, do you have a charger? Do you want, do you want to pause? I don't, have a, I don't have a charger here. It's probably upstairs in my bedroom, you know, and I'll have to leave. So I've, I've just stopped it, actually. Hmm. We're we're not really referring to it much, are we? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll sort of um, I, I can keep I can keep us on on track, so so that's that's okay. fine. Because um, basically, we're just using it as obviously a, a, a reminder. A yeah, reminder. That's right. Yeah. Um, Actually, I have got a charger down here. I'll just go and plug it in. It won't be a second. Okay. Yeah. I'll just ask everybody to pause it for for a brief second then. So just pause the the video, and then we'll um, continue in in a moment. Well, I've plugged it in, but I can't have it here with me while I'm talking to you. Oh, that's that's okay. Then we we'll, we we'll just we we'll just keep keep going. So, um, right. if everybody wants to um, press play again in three, two, one, play. Okay, okay. so we're back. Um, so uh, we just um, the scene just just before the, uh, this one was um, obviously with Sue Lloyd and also the I believe it's the uh, the, the gun for hire that you. Or the private investigators that you hire in the, yeah. in the story. Do you remember much? I think it's, it, the gentleman's name was uh, Peter Hayward. Do you remember him at all? Yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah, he he did a lot of TV work at the time. Hmm. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I was I, I was a bit in awe of Sue Lloyd because uh, she was a very glamorous lady at the time, and oh, yeah. I was I was somewhat younger than her, so. Um, I was a bit in awe of her, I think. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure many people were. Um, in terms of um, after shooting, did, did you all kind of hang out together or was it kind of...? Uh... Um, not, not tremendously, not that I can remember, you know. We, we occasionally we used to lunch together, mm. but um, no, being at Pinewood, you know, we all sort of went, went our own way at the end of the day. Mm. Um, on that, uh, on that, on the persuaders. I mean, a lot of other stuff that I did. Uh, you know, I got quite friendly with people on to serve with love. Um, I remember taking Judy Jason and Sydney Poitier and Lulu. We all used to go to quite a famous nightclub in London at the time called Dolly's. I think it was. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, dance around and have a good time. Sounds very nice. Yeah. So, do you, would you uh, um, have auditioned for Robert S. Baker, the, the producer? Would it have been a director, or do you know if he would have seen you for this? For, for, for The Persuaders? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I met with um, Sidney Hares, the, mm. the director, Yeah. Uh, just before. Mm. And, um, yeah. I, th I think I was offered the part straight away. Hmm. I, I, it wasn't like an audition. So it might in the case he saw you in something else and thought you were kind of a, a good fit for this. Yeah, I think I think they'd see me in other things. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been put forward to it for it. You know, I mean, to serve with love did um, did give me a good start in the business in the film business. I was only I was only straight out of drama school when I did that. 
and, and what made you want to become an actor in, in, in the first place? How did it all come about? I'd, I'd always wanted to be an actor. I'd, I did a lot of acting at school, um, at Cranley School, even at prep school. I, I, I played Dr. Faustus by Marlowe at the age of about 11, <laughs> to 12, you know, mm. and then did quite a lot at, um, at the public school, Cranley. Midsummer Night's Dream, Henry the Fourth, a lot of Shakespeare, hmm. and so when I left school, I wanted to go to RADA, and I did an audition and got into RADA. Hmm. Did two and a half years there, three years, and um, the same month that I came out of RADA, I went up for a meeting. Well, a, a, a an agent saw me at RADA. Hmm in one of the shows there. And he put me up for To Sew With Love. Mm. And I got that film within about three weeks of leaving drama school. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and from that I got the contract. So I did the anniversary almost straight after that. Yeah. The Desperados, Twisted Nerve. So I had a, had a great start and then telly, and then it kind of died or it died out a bit. And were you always? I lost out. Uh, were, you, were you always um, dipping back into theatre in, in between all these these jobs? No, no, I didn't do much theatre in between. Hmm. It w wasn't until it sort of dried up after um, after Persuaders and Koshmel, uh UFO. Uh, television started to dry up, and that's the time I. I wanted to go, I, I went into the theatre and mm. I just got married at the time and I was living in Farnham and there was a very good theatre there called the Redgrave. Yeah. And I did about two or three years there. And I believe later on you were director of the, the Windsor Theatres? Yes, yes, yeah, I, I was the director there. But, um, you know, and then it all sort of dried up and I then went to work, I, I gave up acting completely. Hmm. And um, I went and joined a family business, worked there for about five or six years with my brother and father. Mm -hmm. And then they sold the business Yeah. and I had shares in the business, so I had a bit of money. So I went for a holiday to Barbados hmm. and while I was there, I saw this property and I bought it and uh, opened a restaurant on the beach in Barbados. Very nice. And I, I, I lived there for about 18 years. Mm. Um, but in between that, I did, I did, yeah, before I went to Barbados, I did, did go back into acting mm. because I met this guy. I'd done a play, a, a, another play at Farnham and he directed it and he had written this musical. Yeah. He, he told me about it and I helped raise the money to produce it. And we put it on in the West End. And in 1990, it won the Best Musical of the Year Award. Oh, wow. And we, we beat Miss Saigon to, to the Best Musical. That, that's quite something. It was called um, Return to the Forbidden Planet. Uh, and do you, uh, has there been talk of um, revivals or anything like that uh, since then? Well, it, 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 it still gets put, put on at different theatres around the country and mm. um yeah but I did two years in the West End doing that and, and you, did you like the working in the West End yeah well, I loved it and it was the rock and roll musical I actually got to sing all shook up on stage every night for two years oh wow <laughs> uh, I mean how do you find working on stage compared to um tv work or, or film work and how do you keep it fresh after eight performances every every week. How watch? How well, you... I think that's that's part of your training as an actor, you know, mm. to be able to reproduce the same performance every night. Um, and I I think I prefer I prefer live audiences to television or film because you get you know reaction all the time. You you can gauge how you, how it's going down with the audience. To, due to their reaction. No, so I, I really enjoy stage work. And you... Um, always... The great thing about film is it lasts forever and people like you have seen me and, you know, 
I was probably, you probably weren't born when I was doing a lot of these things. <laughs> yeah, I was born in 1984, so um, it's... Um, well, when, when, when uh, the Persuaders was up. Oh, really? Uh, uh, 71 Persuaders, so 13 years later I, I showed up and... Um, All right. But I, I suppose that that's the beauty, isn't it, of, of, of DVDs and videos that... Yeah, they last forever. Hmm. They last forever. As an actor, are you surprised that that this work, people keep mentioning it, and it has become classic? No, like I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a bit surprised, but I'm very, th I'm thrilled about it, you know, because it's, mm. it means, you know, I've done something which um, can go on entertaining people, mm. you know, maybe long after I've gone. <laughs> the, yeah, it lasts, lasts for, for forever. Um, I mean, in terms of what you would like to be remembered for, you know, I suppose it would be, say, persuaded to sow with love. Yes. Yeah. Else that you would think would actually, I would really like people to to see this and to remember me. Yeah. Yeah, to sow with love and the anniversary and the desperados. Um. When we did, when we did that show, I told you about in the West End. Hmm. Um, we we did quite a few television sort of um, interviews and things of it hmm. and um, when we won the best musical of the year award we, we actually performed on the stage of um, the theatre royal drury lane and that was filmed yeah so i've got that on youtube hmm. and also the whole show was filmed by um the sound engineer on the show from the from the sound engineer's desk so it's actually a long long way away hmm. but the whole of that show is on youtube oh that's nice too but, so that, you know it's it, it's there forever which is great hmm. i think that's a nice thing about that modern theater is that so many productions do get filmed and then there, yeah. there, so there is a preservation there of, that's of right. what shows yeah um, yeah so in terms of the persuaders would you have um watched the episode when it when it went out or oh yeah Definitely, I would have done. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't remember with with whom or what, how, but um, yeah, I did watch it. <laughs> I imagine it was quite a big deal, particularly in in Britain, to have this. this yeah, series. it was one of the top shows of the time. Mm. Um, so a, a lot of people were watching it. And did you get much recognition from it at, at the time? Did it lead on yeah. to anything? Well, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, don't think I got much work from, from it. I didn't do a lot of stuff after that. I think UFO was after that. I can't remember. Mm. Can't remember the probably I think. timing of things. Mm. Um, I yeah. enjoy the. I really enjoyed the UFO episode because mm. it was unlike many of the other episodes. Because my part in it was very much of a modern guy. Um, this is a scene where I sort of take these hallucinogenic jobs, the drugs, oh, yeah. go, go on this trip, you know, yeah. and see, see the spacemen, you know, <laughs> and that, and uh, Tessa Wyatt was in that with me. She oh, was yeah. great. She was, she was great. Hmm. Lovely actress. So I really enjoyed doing that UFO. Secret Army I did, which was a bit boring. I played a German officer in that. <laughs> uh, so, so in terms of all the your TV work, where does the persuader sit in terms of? Oh, oh it's one of the top ones. One of the top ones. ones. Yeah, yeah. Tony Curtis and Roger Moore. I mean, you know. Yeah, you can't get better than that, can you? Yeah, I, yeah. I think. Um, and we mentioned uh, earlier that obviously some shows that you worked on would have been videotapes, uh, so shot as uh, as live. Um, yeah. Do you like doing live TV? I've done. Not really. I don't think I've done any live TV. Ah, oh, so it was all most of it you did yeah. was what was on film, and so it was shot. Um, I really, the series I did for BBC Crush Merle, hmm. it was filmed. Yeah. Or it was videotaped. Yeah. And um, they, the the BBC wiped a lot of their tapes. They did, yes. Mm. And I think it was wiped. But somebody had recorded it, and you can get it on DVD now. Oh, good, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but um, the BBC actually actually wiped it. 
you know, they, stuff, you know, because it was all on tapes and they reused them, you know, they in those days, um, they needed the material to actually reuse the tapes. Yeah, so I think tape was, was quite expensive at, at, at that time and also obviously very large. So yeah. there was a money and a storage issue. So yeah, that's right. never thought that 50 odd years later, if you want to see, yeah. you know, a lot of Doctor Who went that way as well. That's right. That's, yes, I, I've heard about that. Mm. The Crossmill had a fantastic cast, mm. you know, very eclectic cast of Cyril Cusack, uh, uh, what's his name, Griffiths. Uh, Hugh Griffiths, hmm. um, Madeline, Madeline Smith was in it. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Sid Heyman, uh, all sorts of people. If you look it up on IMDb, it's a fantastic mm -hmm. cast. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I, I will. And it, it, um, was about, it was about um, six or seven episodes on TV. I'm just going to see what we've had a few questions uh, come in. Um, Annette has asked, uh, do you play any instruments? When I saw Return to the um, Forbidden Planet, the cast played several instruments. I play a bit of guitar, not terribly well, but I did play the guitar in Forbidden Planet uh, mm. very much uh, as, a, as a backing backing guitar, you know. Um, I, I can play about six chords. <laughs> But uh, no, some of the um, musicians in Forbidden Planet were, were very good musicians. Some of the actors, it was actor musicians. Yeah. And, and some of them were terrific. Any um, other questions? Uh, yes, we can do a couple more. Um, uh, I have that one. Uh, yes, so this is from uh, Ian, I believe. So uh, the role in UFO is very interesting. How much was explained to you about the idea that you were playing an alien um, it's not your favourite episode of the series. Well, I mean, it was all explained to me, you know, and uh, I understood the the idea of it. Uh, but I, I wasn't an alien. I was um, somebody that the aliens took possession of, if, if you oh, like. And, yeah. And I was brought back to, uh, you know, I wasn't dead when I fell off the roof of the building. Mm. Uh, they carried me off and then brought me back to life and sent me back to um, to recover this thing which um, worked worked the, the flying saucer yeah. as far as I remember. Did you like w working on science fiction programs? Did, did well you... it's the only one I ever did well apart from what's it called the Blake 7. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah it was quite fun quite mm. fun. Uh, we had a scene earlier with you and um, you and Tony Curtis and, and Roger Moore. Yeah. I was wondering, whether, um, obviously Roger Moore is, is well known for playing practical jokes on set. Did, did that ever occur on The Persuaders? <laughs> Not that I can remember, to be honest with you. No. I'm sorry, my memory of those things isn't terribly good. I mean, if it was uh, really funny, I would have remembered it. <laughs> but I can't think. Because I imagine, obviously, because it's TV, you're filming quite quickly, so I imagine it had to be yeah. fairly serious by the nature of the turnover. Yeah. And also, it's a long time ago now. Uh, yeah, I guess one thing, that I remember going to, we did an event for the 40th anniversary of the Persuaders and Roger Moore was there and the, um, uh, one of the, from the producers and yeah. of course it's 50 years and it, it just seems to have gone by in a, in a heartbeat really. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, and and the, the person that was with Roger Moore at, at that event was uh, a gentleman called Johnny Goodman, who was the executive in charge of production. So I, you may perhaps have got uh -huh. I know the name, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. So obviously Robert S. Baker, who produced The Saint, also did The Persuaders. Yeah. Guessing people like Robert and Johnny were kind of more behind the scenes rather than on the set all the time. I think Roger Moore would find it very hard to remember specific things because I mean when you think of all the television he did the saint he was yeah. I, Ivanhoe as well wasn't he before that but yeah. Ivanhoe then the saint then the persuaders yeah. and and quite a few films in between before he became James Bond hell um, of a lot of work he did yeah and, and he did a massive amount of, of films in between the bonds as well you know remarkable you know, remarkable machinery in terms of the, oh, yeah. 
he, he was in. Um, yeah. yeah. An interesting film I did, um, which was a made-for-TV film for mm. um, Universal. Yeah. It, and it's, it was just made for TV, and it's shown on TV, and not mm. many people have seen it. But um, it was very good, and a very, very good French actress in it, mm. Pascal Petit. Mm. And um, I was thrilled to work with, with her because she'd just been in a French film called, um, well, it's called The Cheaters in, in English. I forgot yeah. what it's called in French. Les Tricheurs. And she was massive in France at the time. Mm. And um, th this, this was a film called The Berlin Affair. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, Claude Dauphin was in it. And... Uh, an American leading actor called Darren McGavin. Um, I really enjoyed doing that. And we filmed it in Berlin at yeah. the time when Berlin was split, you know, when it was East Berlin and West Berlin. Um, so what was it complicated fil filming in, in Berlin at that, that time? Well, we, we filmed in West Berlin. Mm. We weren't allowed to go anywhere near East Berlin, but... Um, it was, yeah, it was interesting, you know, and obviously we saw the wall and all the rest of it. Hmm. Um, but if you get a chance to have a look at it, it's good. The, the, the Berlin Affair. I, I will, I would do yeah. so. That sounds very good. Well, it's in my CV on IMDb. Yes, <laughs> I'll look that up. Um, well, we did to see a, a scene with uh, an actor called Richard Hundle, who um, went on to play um, uh, Doctor Who in a... He, he, uh, replaced with replaced William Hartnell's version yeah. of the Doctor because obviously William Hartnell had um, passed away a few years ago, so there was oh, a yeah. Doctor Who connection to um, oh, right. um But yeah, he doesn't share any scenes with, with, with you, unfortunately. No. Um, I have had a question about, I don't know if you've already touched on it uh, briefly, um, but Paul, Paul wanted to know if you had any um, further memories of the anniversary that you wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> the anniversary was interesting because um, Betty Davis didn't like the original director. Right. He was a guy called Alvin Rakoff. And uh, she was a big, big Hollywood star. Hmm. And um, she reckoned that he was a TV director. And yeah. that he, he was making her move for the camera, hmm. was what she said. And she said the camera should always follow her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, after two weeks of filming, mm. she refused to turn up on the set until he was replaced. Ah. So they then brought in a, a guy called Roy Baker, who'd done a lot of films, but, you know, mm. he was more her type of director. Yeah. Um, I also remember that um, Sheila Hancock didn't really get on with um, Billy Davis. Right. Um, she didn't like the star in this because Betty Davis, I mean, she was a huge star, but she behaved like a star, you know. Right. And, um, um, I think Sheila Hancock was more a sort of English actor. Mm. And um, so th there was a bit of friction there. Yeah. Um, but Betty Davis was very, very good to me. And uh, I remember I, I brought my mother to the set for lunch one day because she was a big fan of Betty Davis. Hmm. And Betty Davis was very good with the sat and talked to her for a bit. And, oh, lovely. Yeah, so she was lovely in that way. Uh, what else can I remember? Oh, of course, Elaine Taylor, who I played opposite, she was my girlfriend in the film. Hmm. She went on, to, she sort of gave up acting and married... Christopher Plummer. Oh yes, yes. So she, she's uh, Mrs. Chris. She, you know, after she got married, she did, she didn't work anymore, hmm. and he's just died. I often wonder how she is. You know, if she's still alive, and you know, it would be interesting to know, wouldn't it? She gave up her career to to marry him. Yeah. And until Anthony Hopkins won the Oscar recently, he was the oldest actor to win an Oscar. Christopher Plummer. Yes, yes, that's a very good point. Yes. 
Um, yeah, I think that's probably why you do see a lot of actresses in shows like The Slayers, The Avengers, and they kind of disappear. Yeah. They, you know, it must be difficult to be an actor and to be for family and. I yeah. Mean, you know, yes, but she was a good actress, Elaine. Mm. Um, but she was obviously devoted to Christopher Plummer. Yeah. Um, she did. She'd done a couple of things before that. I've forgotten. Oh God, what was it? Oh, half a sixpence. She was in. Hmm. Hmm. Do you remember uh, Roy Baker, the the director of, of the anniversary? Yeah, yeah. He he was um, he was a nice man. He was sort of um, very English and very measured uh, hmm. in his uh, direction. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I can't remember anything much more about him. Because really. yeah. I think, it, like a lot of actors, he's a lot of directors. He started on. Um, uh, TV series like like the the same. Yeah. Um, did you find that that directors who had a background in TV were more more efficient, faster working? Was there kind of a you know, yeah? There's a difference between TV directors and film directors. Hmm. The, the best film director I worked with, and we haven't mentioned this other film I did, was The Adventurers. Oh, but yes, which, which was filmed by which was directed by Lewis Gilbert. Who oh, really yeah. was the mm. best director I've ever worked with. Mm. Um, I mean, the, the amount of films he's done was terrific. Unfortunately, The Adventurers, although it was a huge uh, hit as a book, mm. um, you know, The ca Carpet Baggers was written. Uh, uh, what was the writer? I've forgotten the name. Oh, it'll come to me. But um, I thought it was going to be a huge film. Mm. And I think it's a very underrated film, but it didn't do very well at the box office. Mm. It had a massive cast. Olivia de Havilland was in it, Rosanna Brazzi, Pat Candice Bergen. Yeah. Mm. It's a good film if, you're, if you've never seen it. Yeah, it's one of those I, I, I tend to look, to, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it again. I probably saw it many, many years ago. Um, so what made Lewis Gilbert the, the, the best director from your point of view? Oh, well, I mean, just the scale on which he, he could work and, and how he could, um, uh, you know, direct crowds and um, direct a whole sequence of, um, you know, big, massive crowd scenes and, mm. and small, intimate scenes. Uh, very easy going, very easy to talk to. Mm. Um, he had a, a lovely wife. Uh, and in fact, she got me the part in the film because I'd done a film with the Desperados with um, Sylvia Sims was in the Desperados. Mm. And Sylvia Sims is, had a very good friend and invited me to dinner one night. And um, Hilda was Lewis Gilbert's wife and Hilda was at the dinner. And I met her, and she she must have mentioned me to Lewis Gilbert. And oh, right. It gave me the part in the film. Oh, that's fantastic. Because um, Lewis obviously hounds three of the biggest Bond films that ever ever yes. been. We're in the Trice, Spy Love Me, Moonraker. So huge, yeah. huge film. Yeah. Yes, he he was he was good at big films, and The Adventurers was a big film. A lot of it was filmed in South America, mm. uh, too. Bogota. Another film I haven't mentioned, which which uh, I really enjoyed doing, hmm. it, it was the same director as To, to Sew With Love, was James Clavell. Right. He cast me in a film, again, which I think is very underrated, because I think Michael Caine gives one of his best performances. Oh, in yeah, yes. The Last Valley, it's called. Oh, yes, Last... I did have that down as a question of, of, yeah. of what it's like to, to work on that and, and with Michael Caine. And... Uh, the Last Valley... Michael Caine and Omar Sharif. Mm, yeah. yeah. So that was uh, that was quite an experience. Nigel Davenport was in it. Per Oscarson. Mm -hmm. um, we filmed it in Austria. Yeah. All all in the open air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. I'll come back to that in a second. But on the screen, we're just seeing the the final encounter between you and um, uh, Jenny Lindley. Um, so you have a little bit of a sort of a a bit, of, a bit of a fight scene. Do you remember doing that with? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that where I slapped her? 
Uh, you start that, at the beginning, but then in the end, she's trying to kill you, and you have a little struggle. That's right. Oh yeah, and I get shot, don't I? Yeah, I get shot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I, lo I lo love a bit of blood. Mm. <laughs> I got shot dead in the Desperados too. I remember, you know, they give you one of those little um, plastic things with blood in it under your shirt. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then a, and then a sort of thing going down your arm and you have to press the button when it, and all the blood comes out. Uh, it's a, a squib, isn't it? Is that what yeah, it? like a squib, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you, do you like doing a a action and stunts? Oh and yeah, I love action. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a great horseman too. I love riding horses. Uh, so I did a lot of that in the Desperados. Oh, lovely. Um, so, so going back to um, Omar Sharif, what was, what was he like to, to, oh, to... yeah. Um, the great thing I remember about Omar was um, we, uh, in the evening in the hotel, we used to, the actors would sit around and play cards, you know, and we'd play, play a bit of poker. Yeah. And, um, uh, one night, Omar Sharif said, well, I'm not going to play with you anymore because um, I'm a professional bridge player and I'll mm. take all your money. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't bother Michael Caine. He kept playing with everybody else and mm. winning and taking all their money. <laughs> but Omar Sharif kindly d decided not to, uh, not to do that. Mm. Uh, uh, but he's a uh, very really nice man. Um, the other thing was, um, what was it? Oh yeah, again in the evenings, if we'd go out for a meal in the hotel, they had an orchestra, and mm. every time, every time Omar Sharif walked in, they would play Lara's theme from uh, Doctor Zhivago. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> and Michael Caine said, "Why don't they play Alfie when I come in?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did Omar like that attention or was oh, it? Oh, yeah, he liked the attention. Yeah, he did. Yeah. 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 I mean, as, as an actor, I mean, obviously, it does it uh, fan attention. And obviously, to serve with love was quite obviously a, a you know, a very, um, you know, a big film at, at the yeah. time. Did you, did you, how did you cope with that, that recognition? Was it at the time? Yeah, because some actors do find um, it difficult. Yeah, um, no, I d didn't find it t difficult, but I mean, in those days, so you don't, you didn't get the recognition that you do these days. I mean, mm. I mean, I didn't have people running after me for my autograph or anything like that. Um, mm. I did, a, you know, the premieres were good fun, going to a premiere. Mm. Um, yeah, I won't say, I don't think it was hard to cope with Mm. I mean, I didn't get that much attention. Mm. The film did itself. Yeah. The film, Sir With Love was one of the biggest box office films of the year. But of mm. course, Sidney Poitier made In the Heat of the Night and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner all in the same year as To Sir With Love. Oh, yes, he did, didn't he? Yes. Really big films in one year. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Um, I mean, did you find um, it difficult to keep a level head after a big hit? Because obviously some people find the fame and the attention a bit. Well, I, hope, I, I hope I did, yeah, I didn't, yeah. I don't think I got too big headed. Yeah. Uh, I knew how difficult it was to uh, maintain a career. And as I say, you know, m my career dipped quite sharply after, was soon after the Persuaders really. I, I wasn't getting much uh, many offers at all. I missed out on a couple of parts I really wanted to play. Oh, I, I did, I did, um, I did, two screen tests for Cabaret in the right. part that Michael York got in the end. Yeah. Um, so I, I was really upset that I missed that. Mm. And also Timothy Dalton, funny enough, I wanted to play Prince Rupert in um, Cromwell. Oh, right. Yeah. He, he got that part. Mm. <laughs> There's nothing so, that... So, you know, I mean, you know, there was, I knew I still have a hell of a lot of competition, so I didn't get too big headed because I knew mm. I had to, you know, survive. Yeah. Um, was there anything you ever turned down or you couldn't do because of, of other commitments or? I can't think I, I don't think I ever turned anything down there. No, yeah, because obviously you do hear of, of certain actors turning down things and, and um, regretting it later. Um, also, uh, I think somebody did have a question about that very thing, actually. Um, oh, really? 
killed each other. Um, Ian said um, Lewis Gilbert had to turn down the massive hit Oliver because he was already committed to the adventurer. Um, oh, right. That's interesting. So he, he recommended Carol, uh, Carol Reed for the job instead. Well, that's interesting. Oh, yes, because well, Oliver was a huge, huge film, wasn't it? Mm. I'm sure um, Lewis would have done a good job. But Lewis obviously thought that uh, The Adventurers was going to be massive because mm. the carpet baggers had been massive. Yes. And who, I'm trying to think of the author of those books. Uh, well, uh, Annette has said The Adventurers was written by Harold Robbins. Harold Robbins. Yeah. Harold Robbins was huge at the time, you know, as, a, as a, a selling books. Mm. And um, The Carpet Baggers had been a big film. And I think Lewis obviously thought that, um, and it, you know, it was on a massive scale. It obviously had a huge budget. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he thought it was, you know, I don't know why it wasn't really, why it didn't really take off. It, it, it's incredibly strange, isn't it? Sometimes you win certain films are successful, other ones aren't. You get films that aren't very good and they make a lot of money. And it's quite um, a... Yeah. Very, I think if you want to lose a lot of money, put your money in films or TV. Yeah. Well, and, and as far as Lewis Gilbert's concerned, I mean, he was a very good judge, basically, mm. uh, all the films that he did do. Mm. Uh, this was just one thing that um, he got slightly wrong. I mean, I mean, I think one of my favorite Lewis Gilbert films was The Admiral Crichton. I thought that was a, a wonderful yeah. film that, that he did. Um, had another question from Ian. Um, do you recall anything of Michael Govard in The Last Valley? Yes, I do. Yes, yes, he was. He he was great, uh, very good friend at the time. You know, we used to hang out quite a bit at the mm. time. And um, yeah, he sadly died, I think, when he was quite young. Mm. Um, and another good actor who was in that was Jack Shepard. Oh he yeah, had, had quite a small part in that film. Mm. Jack Shepard, Michael Gotthard. A friend of mine uh, who I'm still in touch with on Facebook and everything. Yeah, it was in To Sir With Love, and then in Emmerdale, was also in The Last Valley, Christopher Chittell. Uh, Rings a distant bell, yeah. Christopher Chittell, he, he, after doing The Last Valley and um, To Sir With Love, he was in Emmerdale right from the beginning, and I, I don't know, I think he might still be in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it. It's one of the things, from an actor's point of view, that's appealing, is that you're playing lots of different characters and you don't necessarily know what the next yeah. job is. Would you ever really want to be on something for 5, 10, 15 I years? wouldn't particularly, no. I wouldn't want to be in a long series, a long running, no. a soap. No, I don't think I would have enjoyed being in a soap. Uh, when you when you left the business and you, and you went into um, the restaurant, the restaurant did, you, did you, did you take a bit, a bit of getting used to a different sort of life or was it? Well, no, I enjoyed it because it was a fabulous place. This mm. restaurant on the uh, west coast of Barbados. People used to say, Do you, don't, don't you miss acting? And I said, well, no, I'm acting every night in the restaurant. Well, yeah, we all, um, I, I suppose <laughs> anything we do. Is... And we used to have quite a few, um, few celebrity uh, guests. Yeah. I remember Harry Belafonte came one time. Right. And he, I went up and I said, Mr. Belafonte, I hope you're having a good evening. And then I said to him, I once did a film with a very good friend of yours. And he said, who was that? I said, Sidney Poitier. He said, my condolences. <laughs> <laughs> because they were very good friends, you know. Yeah. So he was obviously having a go at Sidney. Yeah. Like banter sort of, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and Lulu came to the restaurant, so it was nice to see her there. Hmm. Prince Harry came. Oh. We, we, it was it was a top restaurant in Barbados at the time. It was called the Lone Star. Oh right, yeah. Um, but you, but you still but you wanted to come home uh, after a while. Yeah. Sort of. uh, I got offered a, a very good amount of money for it, and I sold it. <laughs> oh, but why not? Yeah. Then we came back to live in England again because yeah. my family's here, and you know. Yeah. But they enjoyed coming out to Barbados when I lived there. Mm. But, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose if you think of you know what's COVID, what the impact that COVID has had on on the end of the, the leisure business, yeah. and, and it's, you know yeah. it's, that was probably the, the best thing to do, really. Yeah, I, was, um, I got out of London too. Hmm. Anyway, um, 
I don't oh. like to I don't like to plug things, but uh, oh, can I please say please. If, if anybody is interested, I have written a biography for mm -hmm. yeah, and it's available on Amazon. Oh yes, yeah. so and what's the title? And it's called "Thank God I'm Not Famous." I think everybody should get a copy of that. I, I certainly will. Uh, what, what, why the title? Well, because, you know, I, I, I've been quite happy with my life not being a big star. Yes. And I see, you know, I think big stars have a, have a lot of trouble in their lives, you know, with the, you know, fame is not all it's made out to be. No, I don't think it is. I think people would like to be famous for five minutes and after then it's yeah. not I, I, I just wanted to be an actor to be honest with you I didn't want to be a star I wanted to be an actor mm. and I enjoyed acting and I, I thank god I'm not famous I, it, it just came to me one day that phrase and I thought well that would be a good title for the book yes it's a brilliant brilliant title that's, um, yeah I recommend everybody does uh, get a copy of that uh, of your dog for that sounds uh, a really good read indeed um, just to see if you've got any other other questions because the episode's um, is, is now finished. I can see if anybody else has got anything. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, Lorenzo, just wanted to say um, uh, basically thank you for, for this evening. Because um, what an interesting career you've had. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to be here tonight and thank you uh, for, for organising the event. So, uh, Who, who's that? Uh, Lorenzo. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Enjoyed talking yeah. to you. So, in terms of the um, the persuaders, was was you always interested? Did the character? Did you like the character you you were playing, or is it? Yeah, I thought it, I thought he was quite nice. You know, I mean he he um, I mean he, he. What can I say? He he, he was uh, he wasn't a bad character in any way, no. although he was made out to be bad. But in the end, he turned out to be good. It has a really good twist, doesn't it, at, at yeah. the end? And did, did that inform your performance of it, knowing that you had to... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I knew I was all right from the start. Yeah. <laughs> you obviously had to play it in a way that was a bit ambiguous. So I suppose that sort of, again, imagine... I had to be a bit, bit suspicious, yes. I had to be a bit mm. suspicious. Yeah, and I think you've done a very, very good job. I think it's one of the best episodes that they did of the... Yeah, oh, the right. oh, thank and, you very much. And, and all, all of them are, are, are very good, so that's, you know, uh, yeah. really, I think one of the top... The top oh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that. Um, I think I did have one comment from uh, Annette, um, which says uh, Christian uh, Chateau is uh, still in Emmerdale and also appeared in the Avengers episode... Oh, yeah, with me. The invasion of the Earthmen. So, yeah, uh, with me, yes, I was in the, that with him too. And he, he is still in Emmerdale, is he? Still in Emmerdale, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, so he's been in Emmerdale for must be 50 years. God. Yeah, we, we, yeah probably a bit about that, yeah. Um, so do you have any other final comments you want to make about, about the, the Persuaders? I that, don't know. That. I think we've gone through practically everything. I'm not... Mm -hmm. to, as I say, you know, it's all a long time ago to me and I can't remember a lot of detail. Um, so I'm sorry if I haven't been more forthcoming. Oh, no, I think we've had a brilliant, uh, brilliant, brilliant conversation. Yeah. Um, we've covered a lot of areas. Oh, yeah, and that's exactly what these, these, these events do. It's sort of, and, and I think that's the magic of them. We sort of use an episode as a springboard and we end up talking about Jack yeah. Lance and Betty Davis. And, yeah, 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 cool. That, that's perfect. Um, so the last question I just wanted to have to, to end on, really, was... It, the Persuaders obviously, like any TV show, obviously it doesn't really date, but it does show you a, a particular view of, of, of the 70s. Um, yeah. it, it was the 70s a bit... Oh, it was a great time, a wonderful time. To, um, the, the 60s as well. I mean, you know, to mm. be around when all that music was going on. And as I say, uh, uh, when I bought that yellow suit for To Sew With Love, Mm. in Carnaby Street, that was the place to be at the time. And, you know, the, everybody was buying those sort of clothes and, you know, the music was great. And no, I loved, I loved the 60s and 70s tremendously. So it was nice to be a part of it in a little oh, way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think when I look at, you know, from a, looking at films... Your point of view, from your point of view, looking just at... Just about that, the, the golden age, you know. Yeah, um, it, was you a, know. it was a golden, a yeah. golden age, anyway. Yeah. Um, not the golden age, it was a golden age. Oh, de definitely, definitely. Um, I think I had one last comment coming. I'll just leave that to you before we uh, yeah. 
before we finish. Um, so, oh, Annette, I just want to say thanks, Christian, for sparing the time to share your memories with us. You read that. Enjoy, but, uh, uh, so, Annette has said, thanks, Christian, for, for sparing the time to share your memories with us. Oh. I, it's been a very enjoyable evening. Oh, thank you, Annette. Nice, nice. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I think yes. I speak for everybody, including myself, that uh, we, we all share that sentiment. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much, Christian, for joining us uh, for this evening. It's been wonderful to hear all your your stories and um, be members of the Persuaders and, and and everything else. So it's been a lovely way to, to spend the evening. So. It's, it's, it's been a pleasure, and uh, you're in touch with me, you know, messages and everything. Yep. If there's anything else you want to ask me, do ask me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly be in touch, and maybe we'll do something else uh, in the future. Perhaps. Okay, Philip, God bless. Take care, have a nice evening. Yes, now, I, I shall press leave now, all right? Lovely, bye. Bye.